Thank you very much for allowing us to issue this stamp at the White House today. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. It's customary at these ceremonies to <coughs> present the first album of stamps to the President of the United States. Usually you get yours by mail. I know you get it on time. And, but this is my privilege and personal pleasure to be able to present it to you in person today, sir. Well, thank you very much. This is like I remember a story of a previous president who was a stamp collector and a mistake was made on a, a certain sheet of stamps and they wound up as a gift to him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I understand it made them quite unique from a collector's standpoint. <laughs> well, I thank you very much and I want to thank you for coming to celebrate with us the 
the uh, issuing of a volunteerism stamp. As you well aware, the volunteer spirit built America in our pioneers' days, and I think has kept us strong ever since. But in recent years, it seemed as if some of us had forgotten that fact. I, uh, America and American values began to drift a little bit. Today, whether through the leadership of officials like William Bolger or the thousands of business people and civic leaders who rolled up their sleeves to lend a hand, volunteerism in America is alive and well again. I suppose it was only natural for him to be able to create this volunteerism stamp. In his spare time, he volunteers for a whole host of worthy causes. As a matter of fact, the entire post office is known for that kind of spirit. I understand that we have a member of your team here today, Dick Green, who has been recognized for outstanding volunteer work and for post office management is cooperating with the National Association of Letter Carriers to look out for our elderly, disabled, and housebound citizens. Or has all of this been explained before? No, sir. Well, all right. And the mailman and women today notice letters accumulating in certain boxes. They notify the appropriate people to make sure that everything is all right. On behalf of all Americans who live alone or love someone who does, I thank you for making the extra effort and for caring. The revival of Volunteerism in America has meant a real uplift in the spirit of our people. Because we're working together again, hope that seemed to be disappearing is being restored. The stamp we dedicate today should become a symbol of our renewed spirit and a reminder that for a nation in which neighbor helps neighbor, great days and better times lie ahead. One of the first uses of this new stamp will be to send a National Volunteerism Week message to hundreds of organizations across the country. And one example is a letter that I have here addressed to the Buffalo Variety Club Channel 7 Telethon. Since 1962, they've raised $9 million to support programs and facilities at Children's Hospital of Buffalo and its Rehabilitation Center. And my message to those 3,000 volunteers up in Buffalo is uh, to keep up the good work. So. There's a letter for delivery. <laughs> right. Well, and uh, Jimmy, have you, you, have you uh, told them our little incident the other no, day with I Sister haven't. Madeline? I haven't. May I? Please. Have you this volunteer is a thing to show you. It has caught. It's all over the country. Uh, just the other day, yesterday, I was in the Roosevelt Room with representatives, everything from the American Medical Association, Dental Society, all those groups. And I have a list that long now from their report all over the country, with Congress up on the hill thinking about some kind of a new medical program for the unemployed who are laid off and all. These are medical associations count at the county level, Ohio, uh, Michigan, Oregon, Illinois, all over where the doctors and the other health care specialists and the pharmacists are getting together to take care of those unemployed who now laid off are not protected by, say, an employer's insurance plan and are providing free medical care and attention uh, for those people. They didn't wait for Congress. And uh, it's all coming out of their heart, uh, not the taxpayer's pocket. But the thing that I was going to tell you about to show you how to spread the other day I was recognizing with certificate six Peace Corps volunteers. Now for five of them, it had to be relatives or parents who received the certificates. They were still out there in the world doing their volunteer work. But one, Sister Madeline, quite elderly, a very tiny little woman, is from Ghana and she came back. She is working there in a medical center where they are trying to do something about the newly recognized monkeypox, as it's called, which is very similar to smallpox and is sweeping Africa. And she had come back and I was presenting her for all her years of work with her certificate. And everyone there got very curious as they saw her whisper something to me and they saw me whisper back. <laughs> and uh, later I was able to tell some of them what it was. She was still working. She whispered to me and said that in their canteen they were very much in need of flour. There was great hunger. And I whispered back, I would look into it. 
<laughs> so this was early afternoon. I came back in. The message was carried over there to the private initiative's office. And before the afternoon was over, Seaboard Corporation had arranged to send 3,000 pounds of flour to Ghana, to Sister Madeline's canteen. And that's all it took. <laughs> well, I thank you again for coming here, for also your commitment to volunteerism. And I just think that it's, it's a funny thing. It is more blessed to give than receive because I think there's a spirit among our people now that hasn't been there for a long time. Instead of saying government ought to do something about this, they're doing it. And uh, every day we just get these repeated examples of it and how easily it's done. The fellow that handed me a resume and it, with a big audience listening said, will you show this to some people? He's now employed. I just came back and showed it to some people. <laughs> and I only took a couple of telephone calls. But God bless all of you, and thank you for this, and I'm sure it will be most effective. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Mr. President, may I Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.